Welcome to Chaos and Climate. My name is Frank Mittlerner and I'm a professor and air quality specialist in the Department of Animal Science at UC Davis. What is the 2050 challenge? Well, the 2050 challenge depicts the increase in human population up until 2050, hence the name. I just turned 50. When I was a little boy, we had 3 billion people in the world. Today we have 7.6. And by the time I'm an old man, we will have nine and a half billion people. In other words, throughout my lifetime, human population on this planet will have tripled. But the natural resources to feed these people will not have tripled. If we are lucky, we might have the same amount of natural resources by the time we're old compared to the time when we were young. But a tripling of human population on our planet throughout our lifetimes is a challenge of major proportions. The question now is, how do we solve, how do we address that challenge? If you're interested in this topic, then I can tell you sooner or later we will talk about efficiencies in livestock production. We already talked about ruminants and why ruminants are different from, let's say, humans with respect to their digestive tract. But think about it this way. A ruminant animal can eat non-human edible feed, such as grass, legumes, and convert it into animal source foods. Now, on the one hand, they can do that, eat grass, legumes, make it into animal source foods. And that process is referred to as upcycling, because you take something that has low nutritional value, grass, and you convert that into a product such as milk or beef or so, that has not just a high, it has the highest nutritional standard. So that's upcycling. But in addition to upcycling, ruminant animals also recycle. Because in crop production, we only use about 20% of those plants to eat. The rest are byproducts and co-products that don't end up in the human food supply chain. However, they have, these co-products, do have nutritional value. Not to us, but to a ruminant. And so that is the recycling portion of livestock, of ruminant livestock to be precise. These animals currently eat about 20% of all co-products that are generated in a state like California. Without ruminant animals such as cows, those products, those co-products would end up on some landfill or just rot under the sky and generate greenhouse gases. But instead, they are now ingested by ruminant animals and end up in useful and uh, high quality products. More than 40% of the ingredients in a cow's diet in a place like California are things such as almond hulls, tomato pulp, uh, cotton seeds, and so forth. And that's good news because otherwise, if it weren't for the cows, it would be waste. By feeding byproducts, our farms reduce the dependence on water, on land, on fertilizer and so on, and uh, produce the needed amount of animal source foods with fewer inputs. One of the things that I find just amazing about ruminant animals is that they are capable of using non-human edible food, such as grass and legumes, and they're upcycling it into some of the most nutrient-dense food you can imagine. Things such as milk and meat. And, most importantly, people actually enjoy these foods. Let's not forget that. 